Hey everyone, it's Timmy Falcon and I'm back with my first match from Game Mirror and Top One. Um, if you want to know a bit more about the uh, tournament and just the general stuff about it, I covered that a bit more in part zero of this playlist, so uh, check that out if you want to know more about that. But at this point, I have finished um, Boy I've won match one of Bracket, um, I believe in bracket C of Division C. So, yeah, this is a replay. Um, and it's, um, well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and cover, recover the map briefly. Um, now that I've actually finished my match on it, so. Harsha um, Troops here, the mixed base map, and it's a bit weird for, like, this is sort of the design that you would normally see in, like, high funds, but uh, it's in, it's a standard map instead, which is, which is very interesting because it brings in a bit of a dynamic of not being able to afford um, what you need in, like, most of the so you, you're not going to be able to use both of your airports when, once you get them plus all four of your bases to, pr to uh, produce good units. So you're going to have to limit your production to whatever you are going to be needing on a daily basis. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the main interesting dynamic of this is like you're relatively limited in funds, but even once you get most of the map captured. Um, you still only have like 20 something per player. 40, well 52 is 52, 53 is like 26k per player, which is enough for like, um, it's not even enough for two battle counters attaining for the infantry, just to put that in perspective. So, um, dependent. Depending on what you produce is going to that's going to impact heavily what uh, you're going to be able to do here. So yeah, that's basically the main gist of the map. You got the com towers and the size of the map over here. Um, they're pretty easy for the center for whichever player has their center base clump closest to is generally going to get the air to come tower on that side. Um, and you can also do a pretty cheeky play of sending like an artillery up to base a lot of this base up here. If you can there in like two turns. Um, that sort of forces your opponent to build a So but it's an interesting uh, dynamic there. Um, I will say that these airports, I've seen in a lot of games, people start with the battle copter out of there uh, without any like real reason to. When they're just infantry in this area, you don't really, you can't really do that because it's too easy for your opponent to just build an anti-air out of the base and then they can completely come out of the battle copter. So you need the battle copter in response to something else or you have like tanks to back it up. And the center area here is very choking. Um, as well as in this area down here and this area up here if you have a um, But this area especially is very, very choking. Um, and that's, that's about it for what I wanted to cover. If you, wanted, if you want a bit more in depth, you can check my other video. But that's, that's the main gist of it. Obviously, Lash and Kindle are very good on this map, like, just look at the uh, win rates. Kindle's all the way up at 65% of this point, that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, Kindle's, Kindle's insane. Especially in the player 2, in the player 2 slot, like, I think, three, player 2, well, it's 50 50 still. But I feel like player 2 is a big one. Yeah, I mean, you, you basically have to play every Kindle. Let's go to the actual replay. So, <clears throat> starting off here, 
you sort of, well, I'm going to go with what I did last time as well and sort of show off why player one has a bit of an advantage here. Um, and that's because they have enough in, Verba first player to get enough income to start tank chain. Um, like Coast Kajor, Coast Kajor, Coast Kidor? Whatever. Coast Kidor here, um, could have afforded a tank that last turn, but he wouldn't be able to afford a turn, a, a tank this next turn, which is very detrimental because it means he can't tank chain at all. And like you sort of can um, put it in one area and then expect your opponents to, to to sort of divert your opponent's resources to dealing with that and having them tank chain towards that, but like you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you do that. So that's the income here is like both players I feel we're playing very optimally with the income. Um, it's just that player two gets the initiative here. Which is a bit surprising since it's player too, but as you can see here, uh, I start with the tank out of my uh, main production center. Um, so to deal with that, my opponent plus a battle copter here. And I, I'd say honestly, that move by itself just. <laughs> It kind of just loses the game from my opponent, but, um... Well, we'll see in a second, but, like, I'm able to base block to, uh, city block, uh, here, so I'm, cu I'm cutting his, um... His, uh, capture game here by placing the tank here, and that's all you really need to do with the tanks, is, like, just deny that it's you can do the sort of same sort of thing with recons, but in a map like this, where there's not really that many werewolves, tanks are the best way to do this. Um, and yeah, my, my opponent definitely should have built a tank here to deal with my tank because, like, he just he, he just kind of needs to. Um, but instead, he went for a battle copter in the south, which I'm going to be able to just zone out with the entire here. Like, it's it's very simple. Yeah. And he's, he still doesn't have anything in the board here to deal with my tank. I mean my... Yeah, with my tank, even. Um, so I'm able to just have three rain of this entire area, and then I'm just using this to zone out this area. Like, I don't need to... The main reason I have this anti-air here is to protect my infantry in this area. If he heads left, I can head up my anti-air if he attacks my... Yeah, the infantry, you can just, I can just kill it, so not that bad. I will say, like, as Kindle, um, it's not that bad of an idea um, to have a battle copter and then just sack it for meter, because you can't get a lot of value out of meter by doing that. Um, it's just when you're playing against someone who's ready for a Kindle and playing around her, you, you can't really. And then you know finally get speed tanks. So able to deal with that. But all I have to do really is just choose an area to push, put both of my tanks towards there, and then chain another tank out of the center. Oh, and in this area, I'm sort of denying this area as best as I can. Like if you, this property and this guy, I'm just whittling down his infantry more or less as much as I can, so. Um, I move my anti-air here, and then I'm going to move these two units in a way that they're going to be either out of range of the gun copper or in range of the anti-air, so they can't really do much with them. And as you can see, I'm just taking more and more engagements against the infantry. And I'm, a lot, I'm able to get away with this, because he's been... He spent so long about actually building tanks to start with. Like not only is the battle copter off in the corner, but it's like it's hard countered by the anti-air. And um, actually, 
uh, you could get a shot off on my tank if you want to here. Um, but it's since it's on the HQ, it's not going to be that bad. Anyways, and it's sort of keeping the entire... Not only is it keeping it off of this guy if he goes for that, which is like fine with me, but it's also like... I can keep on saying that. But he goes for the catheter up here. So, I just do this, I start capping here, interrupt here, and then I've got this guy on the back side. So, I don't want to move in against this because I don't have the infantry available to block um, the city and like, be able to get a nice shot up on my tank from the city. And Kindle's, Kindle's firepower on cities is very insane. Like. This into this is like it's like it basically neuters a tank just with that. So you need to be very careful that. Okay, did I can't do that. Yeah, I can't do that. Um, so I can pivot to this city with this, and then take out his his guy. Um, now it's like. Close enough that he could, depending on the engagements he takes, he could get an urban blight off this next turn. So I'm, I'm keeping. I think I, I played relatively well around it, but I'm, I'm definitely keeping that in mind. Like, there's a reason why I didn't go onto the city with one of the even though I could. So he did a bunch of infantry engagements. He gets a shot off against my anti-air here. Um, he gets an anti-air of his own in this area. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. Because I haven't built any air units. Um, I guess it's mainly because I'm about to get this airport and he wants to start taking care of stuff in this area. But by building the anti-air here, he's sort of inviting me to just build a tank here, and that sort of sums up the anti-air. Um, he go he's going for a battle copter in the north again as well. Not sure why. Well, I, I guess I know why, because I have a bunch of tanks in the area. Um, that's really the best he can afford right now. Um, but I think another tank would probably be better. So he gets enough for the power and he pops the power. Um, he starts trying to take this city as well. So in order to, how do I deal with that? Well, first of all, this guy still has enough, even after we um, power pop, to cap there, so I cap there, I cap uh, here, and I'll be able to get this next turn for sure, because he doesn't have anything bridged to interrupt it, like he could move in with a 3 health and it's still fine. Take out some of his unit count as best as I can. He's got, yeah, he, he barely had enough for the urban bike this turn. So I can move in like this against the um, infantry relatively safely. Um, this was, I what I meant to do this turn was move the anti air here, but this also sort of works because I'm gonna have paint in the area, so I can't really advance against the anti air without moving the tank. Um, yeah, I get some nice shots out of there. Interrupt there. Join cap there, actually. Well, just join there, so I have a full health infantry there, and I'll block this guy from attacking this guy with that guy. So I can move in and start getting back. Um, I go for the cap here, which I think is. I forget if I get that last turn. Um, and then I go for the tank of the OP. And I have 1600 left. I go in for the anti air, for a second anti air to do a few bad pop here as well. Um, oh, and it looks like he basically there. Kind of there. That was weird. Because I think. Um, yeah, he definitely had enough to build infantry in both of those, and he's already, like, 
falling behind in unit count and value. Like at the start of this turn, I'm about to turn ahead in, in, in total value, and I'm five units ahead in just sheer unit count. <clears throat> so, if he had had those two infantry, he'd be in a bit of a better spot right now. But maybe he was going for like savings. So he takes out my infantry there. Um, and that's sort of preventing me from moving in to get this gap, which is annoying. Because I didn't have a point where he really does that. Um, and he kicks me off of that save as well. And that save as well. So he's got a, he, get a, he does a good, pretty good push over here. He does give me enough meter to pop terrain tactics if I want, and terrain tactics is very, very good on this map just due to how many bullets there are. But there really isn't that much of an opportunity for me to use it this turn. So I don't. Um, I have to move all the way over here with the anti-air so I don't face block myself. So it's going to take a little while for this guy to get more health. It'll be worth it to repair it once I eventually do. Um, finish off that cap with the tank and stuff. And I pivot to the right with the infantry here so that I'm sort of guarding it with my tank. The only issue is like you got this tank in range to like attack into this guy, but um, I should be able to just head left. Was my idea of the tank, even if I have a weakened tank, if I'm in the forest. Like, my Kindle will have the calm power at that point, but it's kind of whatever. So, you know, there's a couple more caps. <clears throat> Does this move, which honestly, I don't like it, because it's I mean, it's decent, but like I have enough tanks in the area where this doesn't matter too, too much. I mean, he's basically just throwing away his belt. Um, that being said, it will boost up his meter so that he can pop that again, so I have to be careful about that. But it doesn't, it's not going to matter too, too much. I'm going to get the cap there. Is that the flip? That was a very important clip as well. Um, I kill there and then I have enough power to get the super up. So I go for there. Um, finish off that tank. Finish off that tank. And then <clears throat> be very aggressive against this tank up here as well. Um, so I'm sort of almost face blocking here. Um, I don't think I had enough firepower for the base block this turn, but it would have been funny if I had. Take him off of there. Pull that from there. I didn't have enough movement or anything to like, deal with this guy, sadly, but whatever. It's not the end of the world, because all this really is is a man player. Like, he's going for the artillery push over here as well. Um, but all that means is I have to deal with the entire, and then I can move in with that. Not that big. Like, I have enough tanks in the area, I can pivot these guys left if I need to. I can even head north with these guys if I want to. So, it's not that big. So, I get this power off, obviously. And then that bites for this guy, but like, honestly, it's this power isn't that big of a deal. Um, What's kind of a bigger deal is that he's got um, half the power is stored up, so he's going to be able to get another one off in like a little bit as well, which is just super irritating. Um, it's not like the end of the world or anything. So he's, got, he's obviously pushing with the entire here and the artillery as well. After popping my superpower, like he's starting to mech spam a little bit in the center here, which is okay, but like it's sort of pushing me to build battlecopters and stuff. 
Um, it's like that. Bounce Hunter is such a good card. They obliterate them, basically. Um, so if there's anti, if there's no anti in the area, um, like all you have to do is take out the anti air and then you can move into that pick the next side. That's basically what you do. And the plus side, the double plus side of that, the battle copies can deal with any artillery issues, but they're also really good against tanks as well. So, yeah, so I do a good amount of pushing here. I join cap here, meaning that, well, depending on how he moves, um, oh yeah, I also do, this is very specific how I move here, I do it so that he can't um, attack with either of these tanks into my tanks from I do that very, very specifically. Um, I go for this attack here mainly because I wanted to take care of it, take out the tank, and then I can take a tank, take a hit from the mech, uh, from the forest. It'll of course bite, um, and I'll, it'll take a good amount of damage here. But like getting rid of that tank um, for later is going to pay off a lot. Then, the temporary health loss of it, I think. And there's, he can't kill it this turn either, which is important. Like if this tank were up here instead, um, I might have considered not doing that. And then I join cap here. Like I do this, this very specifically. I don't think I even necessarily needed to. Well, actually, because he has the tanks in the area. I don't really want to deal with that. So I'll do this just to... Oh my god, why? Maybe it's just the drone caps that are messing with those. Yeah, but I take out his infantry there with the anti I mean, this guy is like in a good spot to basically just airport lock that. Northern Airport. And as you can see here, I'm just I've been I've been in the lead for a little while, but I it's mainly been in terms of uh, just unit count and value on the board. Um, but I am about to start flipping things over to where I start getting the income lead, and then I'm up for a lot of secure discount time as well. So once those two things fall into place, I basically uh, confirmed um, the victory, but I've, I'm very much uh, just, I've almost won my anyway at this point. So he has a good amount of pushing here as well. Um, this was a pretty good push, and he's built up enough meters to the point where he's threatening another urban bite next to him. And the the urban blights are very annoying to like. Um, the fact that he went for a tank here though, like that means that I get this cap. So that's gonna be another flip for me. And that's one of the super important things here is like uh, being able to flip income there. Like this guy, this guy's gonna flip as well. So it's not like that much of an issue for him right now, but. I am taking the income to get this property here. Because he doesn't really have anything else that he's captured. Um, and then I have to scope the back up here to deal with this one. Um, which is still going to be very scary. This is still a very scary attack. Unit 5. Even at that health, even at, like, even at half health, um, Kindle artillery on cities are very, very, very powerful uh, with urban fight active. So I added. Uh, and as you can see down here, like the unit count gap is widening and it's also showing off like, just what I can do with it here. I'm taking out that tank very importantly here. So uh, that was a join there, and I joined there for a very specific reason. It's um, an 8 into a full health, um, I think. 
Or it was it the Aiden the Free? I think it's the Aiden the Free. But anyways, the reason why I did that was because I didn't have quite enough income. It was to get me up to 12k. So I could get... So I have enough for... I'm actually not exactly sure. I'm just gonna skip to number two. Because I'm not doing stuff right now, but... Um, well, it was made me thinking I would have enough to deal with stuff next turn. Well, actually, no, the reason I did that was mainly because the, the joint cap wasn't actually for I'm really like it. It was sort of for income, but it's mainly so that there isn't a weakened tank that you guys can attack. Like, this guy's going to be out of range of all my tanks, if I'm being made very specific to be able to do. Um, he gets the cap here, and then he goes for the power, and then he goes for... Like, this artillery by itself is insane. Like, it finishes off that it almost, like, obliterates this tank here as well. Like, if I hadn't gone in with the tank there, uh, it would just obliterate a tank there. Like that. It would, base, it would obliterate a medium tank there, more or less, as well, which is just... Um, Kindle... Kindle Artillery is just insane. So... Uh, he actually goes for the attack into the anti-air with the Battlecrafter. This... This is a very stupid move. Like... It, sure, it's weakening the anti-air, but I can move in, like, this into the artillery range. And take out the battle copper next turn for basically free. Uh, anyways, so I don't know why he would bother with that. Like it is funny that he was able to take off half of the artillery. I mean the entire with the battle copper because that's just how freaking strong Kindle's urban void powers are. Well actually that's only like an extra ten percent. Um, but it is, it is a, it's a funny move, but because he has a power pop, he's not getting any weird for that, so that, that was a very, I, that was a mess, not a If my, if my entire weight were, like, weakened, it would be not like that. So, he moves in like that and weakens both of my tanks here, which is, it's okay, but it's not that. Right. The reason why I uh, put this tank here specifically is because of these two cores. It's because I joined Cap here, and that's going to be confirmed next turn. I was very specific with how I did this the 7 Cap, plus the 4 Cap, or yeah, 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 plus 10 is 21, so that's that's sort of how you need to deal with Kindle is a bunch of join capping, and it's really annoying, but it's not actually that hard to deal with. Um, but I'm going to be able to get this next turn as well, there's nothing he really has to do deal with that. And then I've had, and then I've had three tech here, <laughs> because I need, the, um, I need to be able to just breeze through forest so do that I get a good very good shot off there uh, <laughs> get very good shot off against the anti air as well and against this tank finishing it off with the weakening guy um, start capping there even though I'm not really expecting to get that with the six health infantry but whatever join I cap there which I believe is more or less guaranteed at this point. Yeah, because I'm putting this infantry here, actually, that confirms this. Yeah, um, especially after I do that. Um, and just wipe it out anyways. <laughs> but the infantry there uh, confirms the capture. Before that. Um, 
I block here so I can sort of threaten his base down here a little bit. I'm sort of trying to... Um, why advance with my web and you're not like joining? It's so annoying. Anyways, so... I'm gonna click through to get back to that spot. But mainly I'm... Finish moving. Digital line. Um, I can go for this move. Um, in hindsight, it's not the best. I'm getting... I'm giving a Kindle a shot from the city with a tank. Full health tank is my 9 health tank. Um, and I don't really have enough in this area to like start pushing here either, so that wasn't the best move, but um, because she popped her power this turn, that means I can get repairs this turn. Just that turn. Um, the main issue here with what I did, um, I went for the double battle copter um, to deal with the mechs mainly. Um, the main issue with this is that I'm leaving this anti-air very exposed to this tank. There's not really that much that I can do. Um, especially because... Um, like, this tank's not going to be able to move in onto the city. Uh, and he's got the next here as well. So I should definitely move this guy a little bit differently. So I just put up there. Um, but he's able to just get that for the like, grass. I, I could attack onto the city from here, but then I'd be... It, but I think it's, it's not even that good of an attack. Well, we'll see what I do. But I, I feel like I remember this guy specifically. I don't remember doing much with that. Um, he goes for the anti air obviously, because he's sort of forced to now that I have three battle coppers on the field. <laughs> I'm gonna use the bow the second one. And that's just preventing his tank. Well, it's sort of preventing his tank going in the other areas. He has enough of money at this point, but he can just take uh, um, tanks for a little bit. But I am able to start wiping out some of his max. Importantly, by doing stuff like that, we'll be the bad copter into the weakened tank. Even these four health tanks are very, very useful against the next, just to finish stuff off. Um, and then I'm... It's... The urban blade is very close. But I'm very specific about how I move, so that he doesn't actually have enough attacks here to be able to afford it, was my intention here. And I believe, if I'm not wrong that he is an actual way to grab it. No, he's not able to. Which is very important because it gives me a turn in which I'm able to prepare a lot of my units. Importantly, this uh, anti -war. Very important. So I'm able to just uh, move in with a lot of my units here. I actually don't get as many um, kills here as I would like, but it's whatever. It's fine. And I'm going to finish that guy off nicely. Um, but this area is still sort of in danger because. Well, I mean, I've been ahead in income for like three or a couple of turns now, so it's, it's been over technically for a while, but just making sure that everything works properly here is also important. Oh, I also got the, the transport copy to, make, to get the infantry moving down and secure a little bit easier as well. And yeah, so he cuts his power. Again. 
Uh, but since I moved everyone off of the cities, it doesn't matter. Like at all. This is, it's so easy to deal with Kindle once you figure out that you can just uh, deny her meter and then she's basically just neutered. Um, so it's very easy to play around with Kindle. You know, <laughs> he uses a hat, does have a pretty good push over here with the mechs, but like, because it's just mechs, I don't need to. They're not really growing in this area. So I can just head some. So, I'm gonna just wipe up some more units. And that's kind of all that I'm doing at this point, is just wiping stuff up. Um, I move the transport copter here to deny him the mech attack into the tank from the city. And then I move like that for my tank so he doesn't get the battle copter for the here as well. Get an okay shot off against the mech there. Honestly, it's not the greatest, but it's at least weakening it a little bit so I don't have to worry about weakening it later because mechs can still cap things. And it is basically, I made, did basically attack into the mech with a weakened infantry onto what's effectively a mech on a forest. Um, but like, it's it doesn't matter too, too much. It's still going to be effective, cost effective, just because I have such, so much unit count. Like, I'm 13 ahead at this point. And like, infantry are the most cost effective way to deal with mechs if you have the unit count. Right in the cap over here as well, just to sort of try and get into split his forces a little bit. Um, there, I'm basically forcing him to attack into the city with his infantry and weaken them so that I can just wake up stuff. Like this uh, this uh, cap wasn't even able to um, Get the cap. It was more to draw these infantry away from the city, so that from the base, so that I could potentially base block. Coming on the into this, which I think he goes for a tank or something, so I'm not really able to. He also attacked into the transport cap with like three infantry, but they only have plus ten. So I'm not going to be able to do too too much here, and then. Not be that much of a big deal. deal. Um, because it's on the road as well, and it's in the range of like two infantry, it's, you know, it's this this next just uh, He's he just suicides his tank like that. I don't know why he bothered to do that because he's really 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 low on any time at this point. So. But not that it matters. But. So I go for the super here. I think I did a couple caps maybe. No, I just put in first up to so I cap. Uh, finish that off with the battle copter because there's nothing in range that's gonna deal with it. So I may as well get the uh, piece out of the battle copter as much as I can. Take out the mech, take out that infantry from the mountains due to the superpower. Uh, go just go straight through the forest with the medium tank and take out the Ant hair and like he's, he's he's this is definitely like it's been a few turns since it's been over but it's definitely over at this point um, and because I'm expecting an urban blight next turn I move up in the city here the infantry and cap so that I can bring these bring both of these cities next turn uh, finish off the ant hair there join there. And then I just move in with a bunch of stuff there. I finish off the battle copter there. Take out a good chunk of the battle copter as well there, so I can't really fire my battle copter, the important thing here. Um, and then I place these guys specifically so that he either base blocks himself with the um, mech weakening it, which means I can base block it, or something like that. Or he has to move off and he basically has an explosive effort. 
Um, and then I attack them to the to the tank down here with my infantry as well, just because they have super defenses. And I want to keep this guy alive as much as I can. <clears throat> Uh, get a second infant here in case he wants to like, do more battle copies for you know. uh, So he pops his power and then he was like, like at this point, <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been like five or six times that he's been going on. And I did it because it's like a tournament, so you don't really want to resign. Um, but I think it was like at least turn 14. Uh, even before that, turn 12. Um, end of turn 12, because. Uh, it was mainly this cap with the same feature, which allows me to take the income lead. Um, and the fact that he doesn't have anything in range to deal with this guy is also super important. I'm going to be able to just take this, um, which will bring me on par with Com powers. And because Lash just has better day to day firepower due to getting the terrain bonuses, um, on anything except for cities, and then, like, you can play around cities, um, that, that just makes it a matter of time because they have the. Value advantage, I have the unit count advantage, and I have the. Like, it's gonna flip back a little bit, I believe. Yeah. Flips back a little bit. Um, but from this point here on turn, on turn 12, I think you can save that one. And the main mistakes my opponent made were putting up with this battle copter on turn 4, instead of getting like a tank in this area, or even this area. Like, it's sort of annoying to deal with the uh, push from Private Suit, honestly. Um, because they get the initiative and they sort of get to set where the, where the game flows through. But by not building a tank here, um, that let me just have free room with my tank over here. And if, if this was for like for three or four turns, I think I would say. Um, which was not good for my mom at all. Um, Let's see. Uh, sort of suicided his entire there. No, he definitely suicided his entire here in terms of that. I'm just gonna be able to do that. Like I'm, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna just run and get away with that. With the about because there's a reason I have this hand. And I, I will say, like, my opponent just had all the things with battle copters when we were in that That battle copter, he just threw away for nothing. This battle copter, he just threw away for nothing. Um, mm, yeah, and then he also didn't respect um, the terrain tactics on uh, that turn 15 or so. Was it 15? On turn 13, so. so like he put he got his stuff in like out of range of my stuff, but he didn't uh, account for the brain tactics plot. And like maybe he was assuming I'd go for prime tactics again, but like when the opportunity presents itself, it's like, you can get so much more out of it. Like he should have recognized my, by my placing my thing here. That would be able to just pop uh, terrain tactics and then move in like that. And then it might have been okay if this had it been like a full hop. It was a full hop. So I'm not sure what he was doing with that. Um, 45 minutes. I should wrap this up. Um, yeah, and then we. Uh, 
pushing the artillery here was an interesting play, but like, he didn't have enough to back it up. If he had a couple more tanks in this area, it might have been fine. Um, but because I was able to just overwhelm his stuff in this area, was, I was able to just take out his anti air and then just do the different aggressions. Uh, that's, that's about it for today's event. Next on the bracket is going to be um, this match here against Conan HDX. Um, um, where is this map here? Kraden Justidia. Just it's going to be. It's a live um, map, and it's going to be tier one, which means. Von Bolt's gonna be on the table, so I just hate dealing with Von Bolt because the extra 10% defense, and it's to a lesser extent higher, but like the extra 10% defense is just it it annoys my calculations for firepower. So this this might be a bit annoying. Um, I believe. What seed is coming in? He's seed 20 for his seven points, so... This one should be a bit more... ...of a match. I, think, I believe he's played, like, mainly on bowl, which is also annoying. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see. When or lose, this will be coming out whenever it's done, so... Please stay tuned in for that, and then like, like, I guess like subscribe and all that nonsense, and I will see you.